Today, uh, we're going to work on section 8 of Why I Am So Wise. It's a very difficult section, uh, but a very important section. And in some ways, uh, uh, it, it could be, uh, I, I thought at one time I had an argument for why it, it was the most important section of Why I Am So Wise for establishing uh, Nietzsche's claim to be in the position to revalue all values. Uh, it starts out as a, a uh, with with the revaluation of a value, uh, but then just because he revalues that value doesn't mean that uh, he uh, has done so. Uh, in, a, in a way that puts him in the forefront of, of this process. But, um, when, we, when we understand the, the, the value that he is revaluating and who he is to revaluate that value uh, and the new value that comes forward, then we can uh, see it supports the theme of Eke Homo, namely, because of who I am, given uh, my descent from my father, I am in a position to be at the forefront of, of revaluing a new system of values uh, that takes us away from the values of democracy and toward the values of a, new kind, of a kind of new nobility. And that process, I think, says Nietzsche, is the process of, of liberating the will so that uh, it is now able to uh, create uh, life in us, to make us beings of overflowing life. Uh, and uh, and uh, the current situation uh, is a set of values that prohibits us from doing that. That current situation is the situation of equal rights. Okay. That is a difficult section. Um, we'll, I'm not going to discuss every bit of it, but some of it. Uh, so, I guess I'm all wise, so I section eight. May I venture to sketch one final trait of my nature that causes me no little difficulties in my contacts with other men, other people. My instinct for cleanliness is characterized by a perfectly uncanny sensitivity so that the nearness, or what am I saying, the, the innermost parts of every soul is physiologically perceived by me. That's an extreme statement. And, oh, there are many things that make it uh, an, an, an off-putting statement, instinct for cleanliness is very, very bad uh, expression from someone uh, writing in his particular time. When we look back upon it from the viewpoint of the rise of fascism uh, in Germany, anybody talking about the instinct for cleanliness at this time sounds like he's in, in, the, in the pathway toward uh, Nazism. Nazis feeling that the Jews were unclean and dirty. It's, it's really very, very damning. I, mean, it could, it, I, I don't think it is damning ultimately, but it certainly has been read as very damning uh, and, and probably is the most damning section of why, uh, of why I'm so wise by uh, Sarah Kaufman in her commentary. Uh, I'm going to skip a little bit. Um, try and get to what I think is the most important point. Uh, okay. Here. Um, this sentence here. Oh, well, we'll have to look at that whole paragraph later. Uh, Uh, as has always been my want, as always been my habit, extreme cleanliness in relation to me is the presupposition of my existence. I perish under unclean conditions. I constantly swim and bathe in splashes of or in water in some perfectly transparent and resplendent element. Oh, hang on a second. I have to not take that. No. Someone trying to sell me something in Chinese. I don't know what it is, or if I wanted it, or what I do if I had it. Uh, the 
association with people and hosts is no mean test on my patience. Now, let's focus on the next two sentences. My humanity does not consist in feeling with men how they are, but in enduring that I feel with them. My humanity is a constant self-overcoming. Okay, now, uh, this is a revaluation of the concept of what it is to be human. That's why this is complex. Ordinarily, one would say that my humanity consists in my compassion, in my empathy, in my ability to feel with and with and how others are. Mitfühlen is to feel with, and mitleden is to pity. Is to sorrow, 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 be sorrowful with. So this sentence says, uh, my, 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 my humanity does not consist in empathy. Don't you love it? So that's the rejection of a conventional value. Rather, my humanity consists in enduring that I feel with them. My humanity is a constant self-overcoming. Okay. Well, I understand what the value is that you're revaluing, namely, you're re revaluing what we would call pity, which we've run into before in sections five and four. Uh, and, uh, in four. Uh, but I'm not too sure what the new value is that you're putting in its place when you say that you are uh, in a, a, a constant self-overcoming and that the self-overcoming is your humanity. Let me, for a second, uh, flash to my blog site. In fact, Nietzsche says this. So help me God, I'm going to, I'm going to do this <clears throat> one of these days um, and put an end to this. An end to nonsense about Nietzsche. My writings speak only of my self-overcomings. He says that. And we, he just said my humanity is a constant self-overcoming. So what are we talking about? My writings are a constant self overcoming. This post is, takes that quotation, not from uh, by Gay Homo, and, uh, and says that the, whatever this means suggests that Nietzsche is not a philosopher. A moment's reflection on Nietzsche's all important above guideline to autobiographical reading, and we can see that the essence of his work is not intellection, but agency. Where is the, where is the, 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 the body of thought that is Nietzsche's work? if every uh, line of his writings are uh, uh, reports of self-overcoming. Self-overcoming is an agency. It's, a, it's, 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 it's to act, not to think. Without an empirical approach to that agency, his writings, that are Zustern and in particular, are incomprehensible. What is the agency? With the advent of epigenetics, it is less a deed without a name. Oh, a deed without a name is just a phrase that appears in Shakespeare's Macbeth. Macbeth says to the witches, what is it that you do with witches say it is a deed without a name? So it's a little difficult to know what the deed of self-overcoming is in nature. What is that hate? What is that action? <laughs> when you really ask, if you really ask about it, you're really asking about it. What is the action of self-overcoming? I would like to know. So, I'm suggesting in this sentence that epigenetics, make, uh, is if we approach this idea of self-overcoming through the thought of epigenetics, uh, through the uh, science of epigenetics, it is less a deed without a name but, than it once was, but we are still far, cry from, still far from understanding it. The self-overcoming, this will sound like to me a material, 
is self-overcoming is a second-order psychological strategy that engages a first-order compulsive psychology of renunciation and retaliation. So, and where did that first-order psychology come from? Dad. And uh, where did the second-order psychology come from? I invented it, he says. But by inventing this second-order psychological strategy that uh, 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 undermines the psychology of renunciation and retaliation, it, it halts the burning up of life caused by those feelings. Uh, the will to power is now no longer uselessly expending itself in frustration, as we were talking about last time in the section in Zarathustra on redemption, and it can face its intimate resistances and strengthen life uh, against its weaknesses. Okay. It's a very short book. Um, We are still deeply in need without a name territory here. Now, I'm still not completely sure I understand what self-overcoming means. But with the advent of epigenetics, less so. Nietzsche's self-overcomings had a biological foundation. Now that would be, I, I, I really cannot think otherwise. And the only possible scenario within which all this could have been happening is if he was switching on genes that had been downregulated as per epigenetic markers that he most likely received from his father by transgenerational epigenetic heritability, as those markers developed uh, to profile his father's brain disease. In other words, what I've been suggesting. Uh, uh, his father is gradually uh, disintegrating, uh, uh, and as that disintegration is occurring, a epigenetic markers are uh, switching on or switching off genes, uh, and uh, of course his sperm cells are being updated moment to moment, uh, because that's how it's beginning to seem uh, experiences transmitted in the human species uh, along the, uh, 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 epigenetic, uh, along an epigenetic that rides on top of the base genome and is constantly being up, up, uh, dated in sperm cell DNA, which reproduces itself constantly. Um, so that the most uh, up-to-date experience is heritable. We're discovering that. Uh, if this is happening, then this is close to giving it a name. Self-overcoming, then, it sounds like he's switching on this is starting to sound like science. It's switching on genes that have been downregulated uh, uh, following uh, epigenetic markers that uh, came into existence as a profile of the solid brain disease. Uh, well, can, if that's true, uh, then self overcoming is not an act of thought, but uh, an empirical process. And I mean, the conclusion of this is uh, that uh, I, I don't see in what way philosophy is in a position to think about uh, that empirical process of self overcoming. Criticize it, evaluate it, decide if it's happening or not happening, or what it is. Um, okay. Back to Epidemical Wise 8. Uh, my humanity is a constant self-overcoming. Of, of what? Then, what's the new value? I'm really arrested here. I mean, it's quite fascinating, is it not? I'm going to reevaluate. Is, is this the book that's the forward to the reevaluation of all values? Am I telling you that I'm the person who should be in the forefront of that reevaluation? Am I telling you I'm about to reevaluate the most profoundly held value of the modern world, compassion? Am I about to tell you that I don't uh, feel compassion as uh, for others and that it is, I don't regard uh, uh, that any longer as a true form of being human? Rather, I have a whole new idea. And that idea is uh, that my humanity is coming from, is an act of self-overcoming, uh, my humanity, of my self-overcoming. 
let's find out some more. Um, uh, uh, Lord, let's start here. Let's forget that highlighting. Nausea. Whoops.
Uh, Nietzsche found the idea of self-preservation, uh, or Nietzsche believed that the idea of self-preservation was, the, the belief in self-preservation was the, the certain way we were going to come to a, a bad end as a species. And he sees the doctrine of self-preservation as at the foundation of uh, uh, the social, social contract theory and uh, the, and the uh, moral equality of wills. He speaks of a section, he, he writes in uh, the prologue to Zarathustra about the last man. Behold, I will show you the last man. Uh, we have invented happiness, says the last man. And Nietzsche says, but, but what is your happiness? Is it a poverty and a filth, to speak about filth here, and a wretched contentment? Because you have lost your ability to think beyond and create beyond yourself. You, 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 you have uh, soon the day will come, he says, when humanity will have lost its, even its conception of, of, of it developing aliveness, an overflowing aliveness beyond the uh, level it's reached now. So that someday there will be the last man. That is, the, the human being beyond which there is no further development. Behold, says Zarathustra, I show you the last man. And we're supposed to be repulsed and disgusted. Now, it's discussed over the last man, the man of self-preservation, because life does everything it can do, not to preserve itself, but to become stronger, to become more. The last man seeks the exact opposite, seeks his own preservation instead of, his, instead of a willing surrender to the forces that might consume him uh, uh, were he to attempt to transcend himself and uh, uh, become stronger and richer in life. And Nietzsche's great idealism is an idealism of self-sacrifice, like sacrificing itself to be stronger. And his great contempt is contempt for the self-preserving egalitarianism of Rousseau and modern democracy of social contract and moral equality. And we're all equal and I all preserve myself. So the rabble here is not the, the poor, uh, ignorant and politically meaningless uh, poor person in Leo Shah who really plays no role in history at all, but rather the, uh, the lawyers of the French Revolution who eventually engineered uh, a, a philosophy of, uh, of uh, moral equality and, uh, and, and with it a, uh, a, a doctrine of uh, of self-preservation and enlightened self-interest. I will pursue it. And who, who are they? Well, Rousseau and Mill and Locke, Hobbes, certainly Locke, uh, and certainly Mill, and enlightened self-interest. Okay. What happens next in Wiley, as Nietzsche says, do you want to hear the words in which Zarathustra speaks of the redemption from disgust? Uh, that's an interesting phrase. Uh, what we get next is a long excerpt from a section called On the Rabble, from Gazendo. Uh, but nowhere in that section is there any talk of redemption. Uh, the only section where we're talking about, or, or I'm not sure, but the, uh, the section that talks about redemption is the one we looked at last time on redemption. And then here too, in Eke Homo, uh, uh, there's a section for why I write such good books. And uh, he writes about Zarathustra. And uh, in uh, one of the sections on which he writes about Zar on Zarathustra, he uh, continues quoting from uh, the section called On Redemption and Redemption from Disgust. So we really have to read, think about 
the idea in uh, the section on redemption in connection with the section on the rabble to un unfold this revalued idea of self-overcoming that Nietzsche wants to put forward. And, uh, and put forward and, and, and say, I'm not only putting this forward, but also uh, I am the foremost person uh, to put this forward. Not only am I putting it forward, but uh, who I am makes me, in, in putting this forward, who I, who, I, who, I, who I was and what it cost me to put this forward, the self-overcoming it cost me to put this forward, whatever I mean by that act, uh, puts me in the foreground of, of the project of revaluing all values, and that's in fact why I'm writing at Kehomo to establish uh, uh, that the who that I am uh, that entitles me, or that well, that yeah, that entitles me, I guess, or that, that recommends me uh, as the person who should be in the forefront of leading the revaluation. Remember, we said. If the if the revaluation of values were uh, in the direction uh, to democracy, away from a new nobility, then the question of who the writer is is irrelevant because in democracy everybody is equal. So the who I am is the same as I am everyone, every man, any man. But if the revaluation is going in the other direction, from democracy to a kind of new nobility, then who you are to be calling for. A, a hierarchy becomes a significant question. It's just fascinating stuff, isn't it? It's just, and it's all in there. I mean, you just have to dig it out. But it's, uh, it's, it's all in Eke Homo, and it's in there as rigorously as you can imagine, and with as much logic as I'm suggesting. Uh, if anything, I always feel like under, under as well, not under. I, it, if anything, it's always, and it's, it, it takes a lot of effort to, uh, for me, to grasp all of the psychological nuances and the rigor of it. It's rigorous stuff, which again speaks against the idea that it's a work of insanity. So then we get this long quotation from. Uh, on the rabble from Zarathustra. What happened to me? How did I redeem myself from disgust? Who rejuvenated my sight? That reminds us a little bit of Oedipus. How did I fly to the height where no more rabble sit by the well? Was it my nausea itself that created wings for me and water divining powers? Uh, oh, uh, nausea my disgust itself created uh, wings that allowed me to fly to this height. How does that happen? What happened to me? <laughs> How did I redeem myself from nausea? So, redeem suggests, again, we have to look at the section on redemption, uh, or at least, uh, yeah. Uh, how did I redeem myself from uh, nausea? Who rejuvenated my sight? What had happened to your sight? Uh, why did you become blinded? How did I fly to the height where no more rabbits sit by the well? Did my nausea uh, create wings for me and water divining powers? Um, it's interesting, create, create there is a transitive verb. Uh, so it means that the action of the uh, subject, nausea, is transferred to the object. So nausea created. So how did it, so what was, what was, the, what, what, what was the process there? Remember, we're dealing with the self-overcoming deed without a name that we're trying to fill in. Verily, I had to fly to the highest spheres that I found the fountain of pleasure again. Oh, I found it, my brothers. Here in the highest spheres, the fountain of pleasure was up for me. And here is a life of which the rabble does not drink. I wonder why. What is he talking about? What, how did he get, what highest spheres? Highest spheres in what way? And, uh, why is the life in these spheres uh, one that uh, the uh, uh, rabble uh, 
uh, in which the rebel are excluded. Look at this line. There's, there's not now. Remember, remember the 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 opening of this. Do you want to do you want to hear the words in which Zarathustra speaks of the redemption from nausea? Uh, so you can expect as the rhetoric of the phrase uh, uh, sets up for you that you're going to hear something that will allure you and draw you in and make you want to be there with him. Since the idea is you don't want to continue to be in the rabble. You want to join nature here at the height. How do we do that? So the, the rhetorical purpose, the persuasive purpose of quoting this passage, it has a persuasive purpose. It's not a quotation because Nietzsche was quoting so many women I that he was in love with quoting Zarathustra. It has a rhetorical point, and the rhetorical point is to lure you from being in the rabble to joining him at the height. Uh, oh, I found it, my brothers. Uh, I don't know who my brothers are. Maybe it's some or all of us. Here in the highest spheres, the fountain of pleasure wells up for me. You flow almost too violently, fountain of pleasure. And often you empty the cup by wanting to fill it again. That should be uh, well of joy, color de lust. Uh, you flow, you flow, what is the deal? Whatever, whatever the end, end result of self-overcoming is, this is his overcomer's nausea. And, and, and these, these are the experiences that constitute his humanity, so these are the revalued values. Uh, you felt you flow almost too violently. Uh, uh, well, it should be well of uh, joy. Uh, and often you empty the cup by wanting to fill it again. Uh, whenever we see the uh, use the, uh, refer uh, the reference to the cup in uh, Nietzsche's writings, what Greek god do we have to keep in mind? Dionysus. We always have to remember that there's something Dionysus about in the whenever we're talking about uh, um, uh, cup of, because it's, 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 it's Dionysus offering the cup of wine. Um, often you empty the cup by wanting to fill it. In other words, my joy is so overwhelming that the cup of, from which I drink it is, uh, is constantly uh, being emptied out <laughs> by the joy that's trying to fill it. And so here I am trying to drink it and there's more joy coming out, spilling out all the all the wine that I'm trying to drink from it. Do you want to hear the words in which Zarathustra uh, speaks of the redemption from disgust? Wow. Yeah, I guess I kind of do. And I must still learn to approach you more modestly. All too mildly, my heart still flows toward you. That's the well of joy. My heart, upon which my summer burns, short, hot, melancholy, over blissful, how my summer heart craves your coolness. Uh, gone is the, should be more like lingering, gone is the lingering bloom of my spring. Gone are the snowflakes of my malice in June. Summer have I become entirely, and summer noon. A summer in the highest spheres with cold wells and blissful stillness. Oh, come, my friends, that the stillness may become still more blissful. The, the still, if we kept stillness in there, we would have more assonance, which it should have. Well, this is our hide in our home. We live here too high and steep for all the unfeeling and thirst. What are we talking about? Cast your poor up your eyes into the well of my joy, friends. How shall that make it muddy? It shall act back at you in its own purity. Uh, on the tree future we build our nest, and in our solitude eagles shall bring us nourishment in their beaks. Uh, verily, truly, no nourishment that the unclean might share. Um, and we want to live over them like strong winds, neighbors of the eagles, neighbors of the snow, neighbors of the sun. 
thus live strong winds. And like the wind, I want yet to blow among them one day, and with my spirit take away the breath of their spirit, thus my future wills it. Verily, a strong wind is Zarathustra for all who are low, and this counsel I give to all his enemies, and all who spit and spew, beware of spitting against the wind, and because they will blow back at you. So Zarathustra, by uh, his uh, self-overcoming, has, has uh, reached a, uh, a height of uh,
faith in the older man than anybody else. He is most disposed to renounce humanity. Give me a little bit of thought about the least man, about the least man's vengefulness against life, about the least man's ethics to try to create a morality that holds the strengthening of life. And uh, I'm not just going to get sad and depressed about it and feel, fall into an, a, a, a renouncing state of mind as any everyday person might. All of that is going to affect me much more profoundly than anyone because my first order of psychology it inclines me in that direction. So give me uh, uh, the flag of renunciation and uh, wave that in front of me and I'm going to follow it as far as it can go. But I stopped. <laughs> and I fought it, and I resisted it, and I resisted it, and I resisted it, and I have been able to overcome the ultimate uh, act of renunciation of humanity that would oppose belief in the old man. I say that again? I have been able to overcome in myself an, uh, an abyss, uh, a profound abyss, an extraordinary abyss beyond what would be found in other people. I have been able to overcome in myself this exceptionally profound abyss of disgust at my fellow human being. And having overcome that, I, and I overcame it and uh, it was life destroying in me, as all of those feelings of renunciation are. And as I overcame it, gradually, gradually climbing steps higher and higher. I became more abundantly, richly alive until I completely overcame my, my uh, distinctive abyss of renunciation. Um, and because I did, it, it, it means that my belief in the old man is uh, a more uh, extreme act of, 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 of belief. It's more uh, discipline, uh, not discipline. It's a, it's a, it's a more validated belief because it, it, it withstood the greatest test of renunciation. That's why I'm in the position to revalue values. So it all does go back to his father. This would be, it would be interesting, I suppose, Steve, if he just said, well, like everybody, I think of the least man, the last man, I get nauseated at the idea of self-preservation. What is wrong with you? Where's your courage? Where's your love of humanity? Where's your love of, of beyond? Where's your love of the opposite shore? Where's your love of a star or a goal or something? Preserving yourself? That's disgusting. But in my case, I, I, I Slimer, can feel that. But Nietzsche feels it much more profoundly. And because he feels it much more profoundly, his overcoming of it has that much more meaning. So as the most profound uh, experience of nausea at humanity, his uh, belief in the overman is that much more validated, is that much more confirmed. We have that much more faith in its possibility.
this is from Zarathustra's prologue. Zarathustra is uh, poetically written. This has led some philosophers to be mistrustful of it, uh, even though it's poetically written. The uh, substance of it is the idea of uh, the self-overcoming to come by willing the eternal recurrence, uh, and that agency is science and not poetry. Uh, thus spoke Zarathustra to the people, the time has come for man to set himself a goal. The time has come for man to plant the seed of his highest hope. His soil is still rich enough, but one day this soil will be poor and domesticated and no poor Alas, the time is coming when man will no longer shoot the arrow of his longing beyond man, and the spring of his bow will have forgotten how to war. I say unto you, one must still have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. Uh, the dancing star is uh, uh, something that guides us, uh, because we're, being, we're following the star, and dancing is the uh, dance of Dionysus. I say unto you, you still have chaos in yourself. Alas! The time is coming when man will no longer give birth to a star. The time of the most despicable man is coming. He that is no longer able to despise himself, behold, I show you the last man. What is love? What is creation? What is longing? What is star? Thus asks the last man, and he blinks. The earth has become small, and on it hops the last man, who makes everything small. This is the self. His race is as ineradicable as the flea beetle. The last man lives longest. We have invented happiness, say the last man. Milk. And the greatest happiness to the greatest possible number. And all defined by our self-interest. We have invented happiness, say the last man. And they blink, uh, their mindless stupidity, uh, in having overlooked the fact that as humanity they are capable of creating beyond themselves. They have left the regions where it was hard to live, for one needs warmth. One still wants loves one's neighbor and rubs against them. One needs warmth. Becoming sick and harboring suspicion are sinful to them. One could seize carefully a fool, whoever stumbles, whoever still stumbles over stones or human beings, a little poison now and again that makes them agreeable dreams and much poison in the end for an agreeable death. One still works, for work is a form of entertainment, but one is careful lest the entertainment be too harrowing. Uh, one no longer becomes poor or rich, both require too much exertion, who wants to rule, who obey, both require too much exertion. Uh, nothing could be more anti Nietzschean. Who wants to rule the commander of who, of this, who can self overcome himself and create these new values? Who wants to uh, obey the good warrior? who would like to be in possession of the self-commanding that can strengthen life in himself but doesn't know how. A Nietzsche society is not the society of the social contract, but it's a society of rulers and good warriors in a, a hierarchy. Uh, warriors who are not uh, subservient because they are nominated, but who are willing to be commanded uh, as Zarathustra said, the good warrior wants to, is, wants to be commanded by me, and my command is, man shall be overcome. No shepherd in one herd, everyone wants the same, everybody is the same, whoever feels differently goes voluntarily to a man's house. Uh, uh, And that is the least man, and that's that I think is what is uh, on uh, Zarathustra's mind. And uh, here, this I should have read through this section too. Uh, they have something of which they are proud. Uh, what do they call it which makes them proud? Education, they call it. It distinguishes them from goat herds. This is why they do not like to hear the word contempt applied to them. Let me then address their pride. Let me speak to them as most contemptible, as the last man. So uh, it's the, the, the group of people to whom he's speaking have education. So they're not the lowest class of the French canaille, who are like the people in Liu who make a bare living just doing very menial jobs. 
these, this is the, what we would call the middle class. These are the people who came into being uh, who, uh, uh, and overthrew the aristocracy of the French Revolution. Um, uh, uh, what is great in man is that he is a bridge and not an end. What can be loved in man is that he is an overture and a going under, uh, just as uh, overture means the beginning of something new, going under, just as uh, uh, renunciation uh, uh, of uh, the last man went under the mastery of, 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 of overcoming, uh, and instead of allowing the force of renunciation to burn up life in me, I, I forced myself to recognize that the last man is necessary and willed his existence and, uh, and by doing that freed uh, myself to become a stronger being. And so the, the uh, uh, nausea of, that is character, isn't it? The nausea of the last man in fact goes under the self-overcoming. Or in another case, in my in Y section four, the renunciation that would uh, look at the uh, the, the, uh, the buffoon or the lazy uh, student or the, uh, uh, the the foolish student and renounce him, the, the the renouncing personality goes under the discipline of unpreparedness. So man goes under. Uh, he goes under, the, he goes under the discipline of the will to power that creates a new life. That's man going under. Uh, uh, I love those who do not know how to live except by going under. I love the great despisers because they're the great re 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 reviewers and hours of longing for the other shore. I love those who do not first seek behind the stars for a reason to go under and be a sacrifice, or to sacrifice themselves to the earth that the earth may someday become the old man. I don't need to have God come and whisper, oh, here's your wonderful faith. Just throw me out there and let me find a way that I am not preserving myself, but somehow sacrificing what I am so that uh, uh, I, I, in the name of the uh, strengthening of life in myself, uh, so that I can uh, bring about a species of beings who are uh, stronger in life. All of which I think has its backdrop in our engagement of our epigenetic endowment as we saw in the I love him who lives to know. Uh, what, do I, what do I want to know? I want to know that in my section four, my unpreparedness uh, enables me to be master of myself. I want to know as in my section five, taking the guilt of the wrongdoing of the other upon myself undermines my an inclination to retaliate for that wrong way. And he wants to know so that the old man may someday live, and thus he wants to go under. Uh, I love him who works and invents to build a house for the old man, to prepare the earth, animal, and plant, for thus he wants to go under. I love him who loves his virtue, for virtue is the will to go under, an hour of longing. I love him who does not hold back one drop of spirit for himself, but wants to be entirely the spirit of his virtue. Thus he strives over the bridge as a spirit, as Nietzsche is uh, entirely the spirit of his one virtue, which is the virtue of affirmativeness in self overcoming the psychopathology of renunciation and retaliation as came to him through his epigenetics from his father. Um, uh, I love him who is full squanders itself and wants no thanks and returns not, for he always gives away and does not want to preserve himself. Okay. We can stop it there. <laughs>